This is Jonas at the Solution Center in Tokyo. I would like to show you today how to get started with Redfish um, using Python on Windows. I'm using Active State, uh, Active Python, um, which is available for uh, for free as a community edition. Uh, there are other options available, of course, if you'd like. Um, I just use Active State because it contains a lot of the uh, modules that are required from the beginning. Um, let's just have a look at it here. Um, if you go and um, start up Python, we can see that if we import a couple of the modules that we know we will use, uh, simple JSON, for example, uh, or requests, they import fine. So those modules are already there present, so it's possible for us to use it as is without having to do any modifications, which can be useful if you want to get started and don't have an environment set up yet. We are using Atom as the editor today, um, and um, that's because it has very nice highlighting capabilities for both Python and uh, XML, etc. So um, it makes it easy to view uh, the different files in here. I do recommend it as your editor unless you have another favorite already. What we're going to do is um, just show you a little bit about uh, how this works. You access a URL or URI in, uh, in your iDRAC. So if we open a, a normal web browser, we enter in our IP address here, or the IP address of the iDRAC. And then does the slash redfish, and then the version, and then you can go and drill down uh, furthermore after that. If you access anything else except from the top menu, it will require authentication, which we just did now. We entered root and Calvin, uh, which are the username and password by default for the 13G generation servers, which is what we're using for our demonstration here. And uh, from the systems embedded menu, you can now see that you can get uh, a lot of information about your server. You can see what type it is, part number, serial number, what type of CPUs it has, what kind of memory it has, etc. So uh, it can be quite useful. You can get a lot of information with just a single request. We're now switched to uh, actually showing you some of the scripts. They can be downloaded from uh, our GitHub page. We start by just checking the power state of the server. It's a very simple script. It will essentially just pull the information from the page we had before. It's the same location. And it takes the IDRAC IP, username, and password as the input. And then it just filters out everything it doesn't need and pulls out that power state um, information. Is it on or if it is it off? And in this case, it is on, as you can see. We can also check the power usage. We can get information about how much it is using and what the average reading is, etc. And this is a different URI. We drill down a little bit into the power, power control settings. So if you go to that location in the web browser, you can directly view that information here. What we're going to do is to just pull some of these metrics and uh, display them to the user. And there you go, there are the readings for that server. It's very easy to pull this information out. You can also do things like the network card report, check the NICs in the server, and, um, and pull that information out. It can be quite useful sometimes. So uh, we'll do that. In this case, we just go and we, we actually um, pull out the interfaces that we have in the server and that when we will actually query the, those interfaces one by one to get their individual settings and information for each one. That's why this script will take slightly longer to run because you're making multiple requests. First the main one to get the overview for what NICs you have and then you do uh, queries for each NIC and if you have many it'll take more time. And here you can see uh, we've got a good few, we've got six of them I think.
Let me go in and query each one. So just, just show you that. Just go in on the first one and have a look at that. And then you can see you have a fair bit of information about the about that nick itself. So let's go through and um, execute the script. Now it goes through each one and displays the information for each. So you can get all the information for all the NICs in the system. Of course, you got more hardware in a server. So you can check the, the fan information. This is kind of similar. You have uh, a lot of fans in a system. And we will uh, iterate through each of those, uh, each of the fans, and then get information for them. It's very handy to be able to use the web browser this way. You can actually see where the, um, the information is that you want, and then you can write the scripts around that to retrieve it. In order for us to, um, to show this with nice highlighting like we're doing right now, I have installed a... Uh, a plugin in the browser called JSON view, which can be quite useful. Otherwise, you just get a single row text, which is uh, not very user friendly. So let's go and get the, uh, the fan information for a server here now. I'll speed this up a little bit since it has to get the information for each fan. It's a little bit of waiting time, so and just speed this up and there's a lot of fans in a server even a, a one new server like this one other things that we can do is we can check what the next boot device is going to be now you have the boot order set already in the server that doesn't change or you can give it a once off uh, boot uh, target which can be great if you wanted to boot, for example, from Pixie once, or if you wanted to boot from a DVD or a, a virtual media drive. Let's go and have a look at it right now. We have, um, at the moment, the override is set, uh, and it's set to the SD card. So this server actually comes with an SD card inside you can boot from, you can install hypervisor on. Let's change that to, uh, to something else. It will actually pull the uh, variety, you know, the different types of boot targets that is available for that particular server, and that it, it will then let you uh, choose which one you want to override it to. So those are our options, and then it asks what is the next boot device. Copy and paste in the BIOS setup, and it sets the override to that. So if you go back now to the interface, the web interface, and refresh it, it should change from SD card to the BIOS. And it has. So very quick, very easy to do uh, settings changes as well. Thank you very much for, uh, for watching this video. I hope you're going to have a lot of fun with uh, Redfish, and uh, good luck.